All right. What's up, it's Jan, back at it again with another nerdy bookish video. This is gonna be my most disappointing books of 2023. Okay, so I'm not doing a worst books. I'm calling it most disappointing because I feel like that's even worse than worst books. Cause, okay, I read over 300 books this year, right? If I did all my worst books based on rating, this video would go on forever because this was the year that I was ruthless with my one and two stars. But most disappointing hits harder because I had anticipation, I had excitement, I had all these positive feelings and all this hype for myself and then it let me down. So that's what this list is and I believe there are between 10 and 15. I'm not quite sure, they're all on my phone. I only have five physical ones still because they either haven't sold yet or they were given to me as gifts and I don't get rid of gifts from subscribers or IRL friends and family. First of all, can we acknowledge my emo awakening? <laughs> I got this shirt because I was like, this unlocked the realization that this was the reason I am the way I am. <laughs> this was my literal emo slash goth slash rock <laughs> awakening. Bratz Rock Angels. I love the game. The movie was cool at the time. I was a Bratz girly, okay? I was a Hello Kitty girly for a while because of my mom's request, I guess, and she bought me all this shit because she loved Hello Kitty. And then I immediately fell in love with Bratz and I had a collection of them. Anyway, that is not the point of this video. I am gonna make the disclaimer that everyone makes that if your favorite book is on here, and I'm sure I'm positive that some of you will have at least one favorite on here, I'm not gonna apologize for it because we're all entitled to our opinion, okay? You don't have to watch this if you get easily offended by people trashing on your, on your favorite books. We are all human. We all have our own tastes. I feel like this does not need to be said. So we're just gonna start with the physical books I still have because it's easier that way and it's not in any particular order anyway. So, oh, the most recent one I read was Crossroads by Laurel Hightower. When I tell you I've been eyeing this book for two years before I actually bought it, I'm not gonna say, no, you know what? Katie won't get offended. Katie convinced me to finally buy this because she loved it. And I understand why people love this, okay? I understand. But just me personally, it reminded me way too much of Suffer the Children by Craig DeLuey, except this had so such horrible self-harm triggers and like obviously that's a personal problem right like things you're triggered by that's like a personal thing but there's no warning there's no content warning there's no trigger warning it's like really bad <sighs> Like I do have my scars and everything and they were throbbing, not even exaggerating. Like this made them throb and it was really uncomfortable to read. It would have DNF'd if it weren't so short and if I didn't pay 13 fucking dollars for it. And I wanted to see if the ending redeemed itself. It fucking didn't, okay? This was like literally suffer the children. It was like motherly sacrifice. I understand, I understand what the horror was trying to say. I understood the point, okay? With like the sacrifices that a mother gives to their child, the grief horror and whatever and I was literally like just let it go like Elsa please sing to this bitch because she was doing way too much it would have been easier to just grieve about it it's hard it's sticky because like obviously I'm not a mom and like I'm known for not liking children in books right sometimes in general <laughs> for the most part, but again, personal problem. But this was just written in a way that like, what she was doing was sane. And there was one voice of reason in this book and she was just overpowered with what she wanted to do. It was just so triggering for no reason. Several triggers and then the end, did not like the end, I didn't care. If you wanna read this author, read Below by Laurel Hightower instead because that one was about Mothman and there's a snowstorm and it's like cozy campy horror, okay? This was just fun annoying to read and it had like so many things that I personally don't like in books and it was one star I never wanted to tear apart a book more than this one I'm usually not one to you know make a big deal about books not having content warnings because I guess sometimes that's not the author's fault I don't know how it works but this should have because it's not just the self-harm like it had a lot more than that like tr like triggers that don't even affect me personally so like I feel like it needed to even if it had like a hundred pages or whatever this book has 
If I didn't have the audiobook, this would have taken me so much longer. I'm glad I was able to knock it out in one sitting. Oh my god. And the way the character talked about the semantics of sacrifice pissed me off. And then also if you don't like religion in books, I, I need to move on. It's been too much. Okay, the next one I have in the pile is The Handy Method by Nick Cutter and Andrew F. Sullivan. I couldn't tell you what the fuck happened in this book. Actually, I could because Jordaline McKay and Gabby helped me out on what the hell happened. Well, McKay DNF'd it, but I read this for Jordaline's Patreon book club she invited me as a guest and i was oh so honored but it was a shame that it was this book that we <laughs> had to read because i don't think any of us liked it like i said mckay dnf'd it i would have dnf'd it because joey bought this from pango and he didn't really like it either but he gave it a higher rating than me i gave this one star as well it was also a bad timing because the beginning talked about moving and youtube and i was stressed about both of those things for like the full month leading up to reading this so then when i finally read it i was like are you fucking kidding me they're having the same conversations that joey and i had about moving and boxes and putting shit everywhere and getting rid of shit and I'm just like <gasps> if you've seen the movie Rent-A-Pal it's like that in a way there's like this handyman youtuber in this one it becomes really sinister with him the movie Rent-A-Pal I would actually recommend that movie that movie is so unsettling I believe it was on Tubi that we watched it I could be wrong though but watch that movie instead of this this was also a lot of like dude bro humor like white male dude bro humor <laughs> and I just could not stand it wow it matches my outfit really well though I will try to link the vlogs I have for these if I remember or if like if it be quick it'd be a quick little research through my content if it's not in the thumbnail and I don't remember it off the top of my head I'm not gonna link it but I should have vlogs for pretty much all of these not dedicated ones obviously but just like within but the one that Crossroads is in I haven't edited yet but it was my 24-hour readathon with Christina which was super fun and I almost made it I was like three or four hours away from staying up till 5 a.m. but alas I'm a failure moving on to sorrow and bliss by Meg Mason this was gifted to me oh so kindly by a subscriber Amber from cozy nature reads on Instagram she might have changed her Instagram handle I don't remember but I was so excited for this I heard good things about it it's a lit fic like a messy oh she just turned 40 and I believe she's a divorcee her name's Martha and my one gripe about this my biggest gripe and I don't even care it's like a minor spoiler but basically all throughout the book I was so glad I was so relieved that we're reading about a 40 year old woman who has accepted the fact that she does not want kids okay Okay. And then by the end, she ended up wanting them. And I'm like, we need more books that stay that way. It was really good and funny until then. And I just, it just pissed me off. I still gave it a three because it has that, I want to say she's British. No, she's Australian. She now lives in Sydney, Australia. Born in New Zealand, the author. Okay, but it has that like dry, like British slash Irish type of humor, if that makes sense. It's like very dry, sometimes dark, but like also subtle. I love that humor and that's a lot of the reason why I love messy lit fic. So this definitely had that. And it was very depressing at times. So definitely trigger warning for depression because yes, it like articulates depression well. I remember there were a lot of quotes that really described the feeling pretty accurately to my personal experiences. So I did appreciate that, but it was just really disappointing for me that she ended up wanting to have kids at the end after I rooted for her the entire book for like convincing her friends and family that she didn't want them and she was gonna succeed in not wanting them and not having them and just living her life and growing and thriving. Yeah, she needed that fulfillment, I guess. All right, the next most disappointing was The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab. This was gifted to me by Catherine, I believe. Yep, so thank you so much, Catherine. I love this edition so much. Much. and it has like a ribbon bookmark and y'all know I love V.E. Schwab with all my heart and I tried I didn't I guess I didn't try too hard towards the last half of the year but I really want to read all of V.E. Schwab's backlist so I tried to do that this year but I'm gonna try again in 2024 especially now that Fragile Threads of Power came out okay, this is V.E. Schwab's debut and this is like the reprint edition where they put an introduction note in the beginning and the introduction itself made me kind of tear up a little bit because it was like V.E. Schwab's success story about about this wasn't getting picked up by anyone and then like the emotion that they went through when they saw their book on the shelves for the first time I think that was in the introduction I might be getting it mixed up with when Sib and I went to go see V.E. Schwab at an event I can't remember what they said at the event versus this book but then I started the book 
I wasn't expecting Addie fucking LaRue, but first of all, the audiobook was not good at all. The narrator had this weird inflection that was so distracting to me. It was just like a bouncy type of inflection that just did not sound pleasant to my ear whatsoever. But also the story was so forgettable in my opinion, and it breaks my heart to say that, because again, I love V.E. Schwab. I think Gallant was also on my most disappointing last year. I guess the style of V.E. Schwab, I like her middle grade, but I don't like her middle grade that's trying to be YA, if that makes sense. And that's what this felt like. I didn't really like the plot at all. I can't even tell you what the plot was. But it's like the small town. Everyone thinks that this witch is capturing all these children, I think. And then our main character meets a nameless boy. They try to prove to the town that it's not the witch's doing. I don't even, I don't know. But I was just not a fan of this one and I will not be rereading it, but I'm gonna keep this edition. It's gonna be one of those situations because I love this one. I think it's at the 10 year anniversary edition. But there's also a bonus story called the Ashbourne Boy and you could not get me to read that book to save my life because or to read that story because I just wanted this to be over. All right the next one the only reason I'm keeping this is because it has sentimental value to me okay because the day I bought this was the first and only day so far that I got recognized in public by a subscriber named Kat so if you're watching this that memory will live in my head and heart rent free for the rest of my life. We were actually both buying The Stolen Air by Holly Black on January 3rd, 2023. We met and she was super sweet and we took selfies and went book shopping. We were at Barnes and Noble when she recognized me. And it was so cute. I was video chatting Joey because it was my first time at this big Barnes and Noble. I've told this story before, so sorry if you're hearing it again. And then yeah, she was just like, you're Jan, right? And I was like, I was fangirling over her, okay? And I was like, can we take a picture? And I was about to piss myself. It was such a moment. But anyway, The Stolen Air. So I read the Folk of the Air trilogy September of 2022, and I read it all in a weekend. That's one of my favorite vlogs ever. I also have a dedicated vlog for this. I just didn't like reading from this POV, and like, I didn't like following Oak. I thought I would. I was really excited because, you know, he has his little horns. He's the little brother of, is he Cardin's younger brother? I Wow, I need to refresh on my folk of the air folk of the air info. I mean, I tabbed a lot, so there were some enjoyable moments and I was trying really hard to love this book, but it was, it dragged so much. There was a point like somewhere towards the end, like right here, maybe three quarters of the way through where there was like a lot of character growth and I really like a lot of the quotes. So Holly Black's writing was not the problem. I think it was the direction she chose to go and like the plot that she chose to use and just the characters I wasn't into. It like created creeped me out that Oak was hooking up with, <laughs> with all these women when he was just a little boy in the last book. It just like felt weird, okay? I couldn't unsee it. It was weird. I didn't know he had goat legs. Those were all my physical books. Now I have the note of all the other ones that I already got rid of or had from the library. Should I make a most surprising video this year too? I don't know if I even have time for all that. The top of the list of most disappointing is she is a haunting. I can't remember the author's name. I think their last name was Tan or Tran. I think it was Tran because that's my ex's last name. This was pitched to me as Asian final girl with a haunted house and I was like I'm in. I need it. I was like asking left and right for this arc, right? Couldn't get it. I was begging my coworker, who's a librarian who got the arc to like give it to me <laughs> but she wanted to read it and I don't think she's even read it yet but anyway it was so disappointing because I think it was the writing style. I mean it's a debut but but it was also very YA and it just felt very disjointed from what I remember. But I believe there were decent discussions about feeling too American or feeling too Vietnamese because she went to go visit her dad in Vietnam, I believe. There were hauntings in this house. She was like interacting with the ghosts. Honestly, I blocked this book out of my memory once I got rid of it. Actually, once I finished the first page, but I think I still gave it three stars. It might've been a two. I should really fact check myself, but I cannot be bothered. I was so pissed off when I finished this book and it wasn't five stars or something I enjoyed at all. <laughs> it started out, I think, fairly strong with the writing, the descriptions and the atmosphere, setting the book up for us, but the rest of it, it was a lot of meandering. There were some pranks, I think, and it was just like not what I expected. 
and it wasn't as creepy as I thought it would. Granted, it's a YA horror, so like, what did I expect, right? But also, there are some good YA horror books out there that actually creep me out. This was not it. Okay, the next most disappointing is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. And I know so many people love this book. So I've seen multiple people put it in their top 10 of the year. I gave it a low three, but in my heart of hearts, I believe it was a two because once Sid and I talked about it in her Patreon live show, which she spontaneously asked me to join, <laughs> we've decided it's probably a two, but I'm like in denial and I don't change my, I'm not in denial. I just don't change my Goodreads ratings once it's in, unless I reread it and I'm not gonna reread this book. I fucking sold that book. It dragged, again, so much meandering, which I don't mind in books. You know, I love Addie LaRue. She meandered throughout the whole 400 fucking pages, right? But this was like kind of just dry. And sometimes the humor was trying a little too hard. A lot of people compare this to Veronica Speedwell, right? And I can tell you from the less than 100 pages I read of A Curious Beginning, the first Veronica Speedwell book, I can tell you that Emily Wilde pales in comparison. The humor in Veronica Speedwell is just top tier. But Emily Wilde, she's like this very not investigator she's doing a research paper or something or writing a book about fairies and so she and this guy Brambleby is that his name they go on this like adventure and the fairy world and then there was like a something with a king I don't even remember what happened there were like random stories interjecting the plot of the book and it's supposed to like all connect at the end but I couldn't tell you I also read this and I was really sick around Valentine's Day I believe I think I read this for romanticiathon I know it was in February but holy shit yeah so so again, February, so I can't remember much, but I just know it was so boring to me and I just couldn't wait for it to end. But it was such a pretty cover and I heard such good things about it. I think I liked the first half more than the second half when it took a turn. I thought I would like that turn, but then when it did, I was like, you lost me. Okay, moving on to The Sacrifice by Rin Chapeco, which I got two copies of. I returned one and then I ended up selling my copy because it was a disappointing. I gave it a low three, I think, which kills me because it's a Filipino author. This was my first Rin Chapeco book and I own a lot of their books. And this one was also a Lair Buddy read for Patreon. Patreon link's always down below. We're called The Lair, we're vampire themed. I'd love to have you as a fellow vamp. You are so inclined. All the perks are listed through that link. So just check it out if you want to. The Sacrifice. My biggest thing about this was the movie production people. The characters were so hard to distinguish from each other because all their personalities kind of just like were bland. And I'm not a big fan of books that have movie production process. Like The Fury by Alex Michaelides, that's an exception because that was really well done. But still with that one, like it's just that part about making the movies or TV situations I don't like in books really. There are a couple exceptions, obviously, like Lessons in Chemistry was pretty decent too. And Evelyn Hugo. But anyway, that's usually a thing for me that I don't like in books and this one had a lot of it. It took up a majority of the book actually. The movie was taking place on this creepy, was it a movie or a documentary? Something like that. Some film on this creepy island in the Philippines. I will say the Filipino rep and like the language in this was done really well. The culture, some of the food were mentioned. So I did appreciate that and that's why I gave it three stars. I can't remember if I liked the ending or if it fell flat. I truly can't remember. I think I liked the ending. But also there was this like weird romance and it was YA and I feel like the romance definitely didn't need to be there. I wish it leaned into the creepy island more than the characters on the island. And that's weird for me to say because I'm a character driven reader but this one just didn't do it for me and I was really sad about it because I was excited for this book and the cover is stunning. Next we have Dark Harvest by Norman something. I can't remember. I'm surprised I even remembered Norman. I sold this book, gave it one star. It was one of the worst short Halloween-y books I've ever read. It was so, so boring. It's like a super backlisted book. So maybe, like I said in my vlog, maybe the horror standards were different. I don't know. I mean, I will watch the adaptation if Joey and I stumble across it, but the book was just not worth my time. The audiobook was like two or three hours. I was struggling to get through even that. Honestly, I think the audiobook made it worse and I couldn't even tell you anything about it. But I was expecting this like creepy jack-o'-lantern, pumpkin king type thing roaming the cornfields. I was expecting a lot of gore and it just wasn't there. But the cover is everything. It gives a lot more than what the text does. I'll tell you that much. The next one was a full moon book club pick, I believe in July, which was my birthday month. So that's depressing. The Whispering Dark by what is the author's name? I can't remember the author's name. This was like the 
end of me trying YA Dark Academia because I can't, I've read way too many YA Dark Academias that just did not fulfill my standards for Dark Academia. And this one was just so juvenile. I think there were plot holes. I'll link the live show down below because Casey and I were just both fucking confused. There were so many parts that were like cringy, didn't make sense, or again, trying too hard. There were a lot of cringy lines, that's all I remember. I think I gave it a two star, but it has def rep and that's what really sold me on it. And I think that was done pretty well because it is own voices as well, but everything else, I don't know. I mean, I might try this author's next book because it sounds pretty gothic vibey, but it'll definitely be something I don't spend my hard earned money on. <laughs> next one is really fucking sad. The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I know a lot of people who love this book as well. I really thought I was going to be one of them. I paid $2 for this book. Thank God. I bought it off of the clearance shelf at Half Price Books with Katie actually when I visited her back in 2020. And I finally picked it up this year because it was on my 23 for 2023. And I had the audiobook. I believe the audiobook is narrated by Jim Dale and I love his voice. But for this over excessively descriptive, over excessively is redundant, isn't it? Either way, it describes the night circus. I love a good luscious, lyrical, poetic, Lainey Taylor type of descriptive writing. Flowery, purple prose, right? I love that shit. But for some reason it didn't work for me in this book at all. Partially, I think it's because of the circus setting. I'm not a circus girly, but also I was expecting a much better romance. I've heard some booktubers say that the romance in here is stunning and like, oh, come on. My nose itches. So throughout the whole book, I was waiting for cute moments between these two characters. I couldn't even tell you the characters' names, to be honest. These magicians or whatever. It was like 70% through and we finally got a romance scene. Unless I missed something, that could very well be possible too, but I felt nothing for this book. I felt nothing for these characters and I was just so glad it was over. I think I gave it two stars because the descriptions were pretty. It was really lush writing and I appreciated the setup of the atmosphere, but it was just not the atmosphere atmosphere for me. <laughs> Next one, also really fucking depressing and also one that I know is highly beloved in the book community, especially this year. One Dark Window by, why am I blanking? Rachel Gillig. So this was recommended to me by my, that same coworker who had the arc for She is a Haunting. She recommended it to me. She said I would love it because it's like dark and gothic and whatever. I was so fucking disappointed. <laughs> I've said this multiple times, but with the fairy tale thing, I like a good retelling if I know the story and everything, but like original stories that just have the fairy tale-esque vibe, that's not my thing. And I've discovered that about myself this year. And this was absolutely that because it had all the riddles. The writing style was very fairy tale-esque and I wanted it to lean more into the dark, parts like the nightmare in this book i wanted more of him i wanted it to be not predictable at the end honestly if he were the love interest like kitty said in her vlog i would have liked that book that book would have been probably at least four stars but this was a two and i'm really sad about it i'm not continuing with the duology even though it's just a duology i'm so happy that i didn't give in to my impulses and buy the second one the day it came out because i almost did i was so close so many times i had it in multiple carts and i almost went to barnes and Noble after work to get it without finishing the first one and I'm just so glad like good job past Jan high fucking five all right we're almost done spookily yours by Jennifer something I can't remember this was a Kindle Unlimited book that was going around during September October season it's a witchy small town romance the small town autumnal vibes nailed it okay love that and if we were following this witch we'd just walk around town in the Gilmore Girls fashion of just like interacting with people around town, meeting new people maybe, finding a cute dog or something, I would have eaten that up. But this decided to have a cat demon that turns into a man. The sex scenes were some of the worst worst I've ever read. Almost fourth wing type of bad. Fourth wing is the last book on this list, by the way, but let me finish about Spookily Yours. From what I remember, they talk about her folds. They talk about her back hole. Like, I just, I did not like the descriptors that were being said. I didn't like the dirty lines that the guy was saying. It was not cute. I did not swoon a single time. I didn't even think about swooning. Wow, my nose is really fucking itchy. It could have been so good if she just didn't have a romance. And then and then there was a partial plot line with her sister and I thought they were gonna lean into that more and expand on that, but nothing came about. It would have been better if like something with that happened, but alas. So that was one of my worst. I think I 
gave that a one star as well. And then the last one star of this video is Fourth Wing. I do have a dedicated spoiler filled vlog that I will link down below because I'm very proud of that vlog. I got rid of my copy. A subscriber actually bought it from me from Pango. So thank you, Jennifer, <laughs> for getting that off my hands. And I hope you enjoyed the pretty stenciled edges and my unhinged annotation. <sighs> Fourth Wing. So the story with that, if you haven't heard me talk about it already, I'm not going to go into it too much. Just watch the vlog if you want. But I got the book early, two or three days early. My Barnes and Noble had it. And it was like the only joy in my life that day because that day was really fucking hard for me for so many reasons. And then it was like the one light of the day. And then I read it. I started reading it in, I think, mid-May. And then I DNF'd it at 55 pages. I tried the audiobook, couldn't do it. So I DNF'd it. Audiobook is fucking awful. I do not recommend. The joy that it brings me though, that people aren't liking Iron Flame, I'm sorry if that's petty, but holy shit, the relief that I get every time I see a negative review. Oh my god, I'm so sorry. Totally keeping that in this video though. Yeah, just the sex scenes in Fourth Wing, first of all, if we're gonna talk about it, like that lightning needs to chill. I cannot forget, dude, I need to I need to quote this because it forever lives in my head, unfortunately. So the girl, violent, violence. I can never see the word violence the same ever again and it's so fucking frustrating. This book has ruined so many things in my life, okay? Violet said, oh my gods, during the sex scene, okay? And the guy goes, which one? Because we're the only one in the room here Violet and I don't want to share or something like that and I'm like please like gag me with a fucking knife that is one of the cringiest lines I have ever read and I had to read it with my eyeballs and my earballs <laughs> and I just like cannot believe I mean at least that vlog came out of it but I can't believe I let myself put myself through that like what the fuck is wrong with me I'm appalled by my behavior like I should be grounded oh my god I'm just so glad it's over and I'm not continuing with the series. I cannot believe there are going to be five books. I'm not ready. I'm not ready for the constant, the incessant hype over the series. I'm so sorry, but also not really. Okay, but that's over. I'm done. Those are all however many books were on this list of my most disappointing of 2023. Again, I'm sorry if I offended any of y'all, um, but also an opinion's an opinion, my dudes. Comment down below if you wish. Can't think of anything to comment. If you made it to the end of this video, put A. Let's put a star emoji in the comments down below like one star <laughs> thank you so so much for watching i hope you had a vampy day don't forget to do some self-care and i'll see you on my next video bye